welcome to plastic product design series so this one is a video number 24 from this series so in this video we'll discuss the design guideline and the design consideration for the effective runner design so in previous video we have discussed the step to design the runner system okay so like uh, the guidelines for the effective runner system in that the runner diameter generally it is very important runner and the length of the uh, runner so it is very important diameter and the length that ratio also very important so regarding the runner diameter so you can see here for a small part it will be 2.5 to 4.5 mm we can choose and for a medium part 4.5 to 6.5 mm and for the large part 6.5 to 8 mm or higher we can go but the runner diameter or the size of the runner is actually depends on the material we are using size of the part the viscosity of that material and the pressure requirement in the injection molding so this one is a general guidelines so in the previous video i said 3 to 8 mm we can go that one is also general guidelines for the runner so it depends on the material and size of the part and the uh, uh, flow we required or the balancing of the flow okay so the runner diameter should be large enough to minimize the pressure drop but not so large it uh, so that it can it can increase the material waste in the cold runner system so we have discussed that so in the cold runner systems along with the parts we are ejecting the gate and the runner so our run, uh, our uh, uh, runner should not be uh, uh, long enough or the size of uh, runner uh, generally we need to keep minimum so that we can save the material next is the length to diameter ratio so you can see here this one is the runner so we need to keep the length to diameter ratio under control so higher ratio it means that the long runner with a small diameter result in a more pressure loss okay and so for the best result the ratio should ideally below 20 is 20 is to 1 so it generally uh, we need to keep this ratio below the 20 is to 1 so here the, this one is the diameter and this one is the length so uh, this length should be as short as possible and we need to keep this diameter based on the viscosity requirement and the part size okay so then the flow balance so we need the balancing of the flow or the uh, uh, runner uh, pattern should be like uh, so that the runner pattern it should feel the complete cavity at the same time in multi cavity mode so natural balancing system ensure the equal flow to each cavity okay so we need the natural flow so that all cavity uh, should feel at the same time if the natural flow is not possible then we need to adjust the runner size to ensure the flow balance okay so we can if suppose in our system there will be no natural flow there at that time we can go with the variable diameter variable diameter of the runner also like here it is a small it is a larger or like that okay so it is also possible in the mold okay so there will be the variable diameter of the mold to have the balance system or to feel the all cavity at the same time okay so the runner pattern so in the last video we had also discussed the types of the runner patterns okay so for multi cavity mold so edge pattern and the tree patterns layouts is often used okay and deliver the molten material evenly to each cavity so generally edge pattern and the tree style patterns layouts are generally used next one is the gate size and the type so there are a number a number of types of gates are there so we need to uh, choose the large enough gate uh, so the size of gate should be large enough to have the uh, proper flow of material into the cavity and uh, without excessive pressure drop so size of the runner is uh, gate is very important okay so gate types like uh, age type uh, pin type submarine types these are the most used gates in the uh, injection molding like uh, edge gate is used to e easy machine and commonly used 
and submarine or the tunnel gates are automatically separated from the runner during the part ejection and pin gate used in the hot runner system to directly inject molten plastic into the cavity so uh, this type of the more uh, type of the gates we will cover in the separate video now let's discuss the design consideration for the effective runner system so these are the general consideration directly i will read here uh, so that you will get the idea you can take the screenshot if you want okay so the primary goal of the runner is to ensure that the molten plastic fill all the cavity at the same time so this one is our primary goal okay and use the natural balance runner with the equal length from the sprue to each cavity okay for our manual balance runner where the runner size are adjusted to the balance flow and full round provides the best flow for uh, efficiency and minimize the minimal uh, surface area and reduces the cooling time and the pressure loss so generally we use the full round uh, full round full round runner okay shape of the runner okay and the material flow characteristics viscosity and shrinkage must be considered and high viscosity material may require larger runner for better flow while low viscosity material can flow well in uh, through a small runner so for high viscosity material we use the larger runner and for a low viscosity material we will use the smaller size of the runner and in a cold runner system larger runner takes longer to cool while increases the cycle time so in a cold runner system we generally use the small size of runner because larger size runners take uh, takes long time to cool and it will increases the cycle time and also uh, there will be the wastage of the material because in the cold runner systems we are ejecting the part with the uh, gate and the runner okay and in hot runner system the runner remains molten and there, uh, there is no cooling time involved but thermal management is critical to prevent the material degradation so maintaining the proper temperature of that runner okay it is very important in the hot runner system but cycle time and the material wastage uh, there will be the advantage so here in a, a hot runner system there will be no wastage of material and uh, and uh, the cycle time also improved okay so longer or smaller runner can lead to higher uh, pressure losses and making it difficult to fill the uh, cavity completely and the runner design should minimize the pressure drop and especially for the large pot or the multi cavity mode and cold runner system the runner need to be ejected along with the part as i already said and runner design should ensure easy removal without sticking it to the mold cold runner system generate the waste as runner solidify after each cycle and for a production efficiency the runner should be as small as possible while still allowing the adequate flow so these are the repeated points actually i we have discussed these points in the uh, previous video also okay so in hot runner system there is a no wastage since the material in the remain uh, molten and it is continuously reused now let's discuss the example uh, of the cold runner system for a four cavity mold and producing the bottle cap so you can see here this one is the cavity of the mold and this one is the core of the mold okay for the bottle cap so in a step one like choose the full round runner to ensure the smooth flow and determine the runner diameter to be 4.5 mm and based on the size and the flow characteristics of material so uh, design the runner uh, layout as a tree structure and with the equal length to each cavity and ensure the natural balance system and then position the gate near to the parting line and using the uh, edge gate to make it easy to trim the runner post ejection and ensure the smooth runner surface and uh, to minimize the pressure loss and ensure the even flow so this is the example of the uh, runner design process for the bottle cap so i hope you got some few information related to runner design process so thank you for watching see you in the next video